In the emergency department, 12-year-old Henry's come in with his dad. Someone looks fed up. I can't walk. It really hurts on my bottom. So we'd better get to the uh, bottom of this one. Henry and his best friend Barnaby were mountain biking on some very steep trails. Henry was in front and really flying, doing nose wheelies, pop wheelies, bunny hops and drop-offs. Suddenly, he found himself going really, really fast. Too fast! He came to a jump and got some properly big air. As he was flying, he saw a gnarly tree looming up ahead. Oh no, Henry thought, I'm going to crash right into it. But he saved himself by bailing in mid-air. Henry pushed his bike one way and launched himself the other way. Then he landed, Superman style, right on his front. Ouch! He's got some of the best scrapes I've ever seen. Be all right. Just not got to panic. Correct. There's no need. Here's Dr Chris Young. What's been going on? I was mountain biking and jumped off my bike like a Superman pose. Get him a cape, Dad. Which wasn't very clever. Right, OK. Interesting. I bet Dr Young's never treated a superhero. What's first, then, Doc? First concern would be his neck, which obviously he's moving around quite comfortably. He doesn't have any signs of any head injury there and correctly was wearing his helmet, thankfully. Well said, Doc. At one point in my spine, it hurts quite a lot now. Yeah, so down is sort of in the middle, sort of down there. Mm. Okay, fine. OK. Henry's now sent for an X-ray to check for possible bone damage. Dad spots something straight away. It's a nice picture of your insides here, Henry. Did you have spaghetti bolognese for lunch? Garlic bread? A side salad with balsamic drizzle? Yum. Look out, the dog's checking the x-rays. This all looks nice and straight. The gaps in between look OK. And there's no obvious fracture there as well. Ah, so that's what he was checking, not Henry's lunch. At the moment, I'm not seeing anything that's concerning me. So Dr Young is happy so far. Although Henry's bones seem fine, there seems to be another problem. That's sort of a bit strange. A bit strange, but it's not sore. <laughs> Actually, it is sore. Okay, I'm concerned about just how tender he is, so watch his face. Could it turn out to be serious? Join us later and see what happens. Ouch. The park is a place to have fun. Whee! But it's also a place of danger. You could get hit on the head by a stick thrown for a dog. Lucky escape. Get dazzled by the sun on a very hot day. Nicely sorted. Or make your scrubs really dirty and your mum very cross. One safe thing you can do is play frisbee. Chris! Ah! Ooh! A minor injury! Oh. Still, now that he's hit his head, how shall we treat him? I didn't hit my head, you hit my head. So, what should you do to treat a bump on the head? Should you... A. Try and press the pump back in again. B. Go on the swings and roundabouts to cheer yourself up. Or C. Put something cold on the bump. I'm certain the first one is a bad idea, but I like the idea of going on the swings and roundabouts. Well, the correct answer is C. Putting something cold on it, like frozen peas, reduces the pain and swelling. But if you feel sick or dizzy, tell an adult. That's looking good, Chris. Much better. Yeah, much better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some peas for that? So, if you get a bump on the head, put something cold on it to reduce the swelling, not bird poo. If you are worried, then tell an adult. Ouch! <laughs> Your body is brilliant. It can even repair itself if you get injured, as this next boy will show you. If there's a bone to break, he'll break it. If there's a knee to graze, he'll graze it. If there's an ankle to sprain, he'll sprain it. He's the unluckiest kid. New shoes that rub can make your skin red and sore and can sometimes cause a blister. So what's going on? Your blood vessels deliver a fluid called plasma to the top layers of your skin. This makes the area swell and a blister springs up. It protects the seam from germs. New cells make their way to the top, replacing damaged ones. As new skin grows, the plasma fluid is reabsorbed back into the body and your blister deflates, drying up until it disappears. 
but to help prevent blisters, make sure there are no wrinkles in your socks and your shoes fit properly. Oh, oh dear. dear! He's the unluckiest kid. Ouch! We're going on call with the UK's emergency services, heading into the thick of the action to help save lives. Today, it's Zahn's turn on the front line. This rapid response vehicle belongs to the West Midlands Ambulance Service. It's one of over 800 vehicles serving 5 million people. And today, you're coming on call with me to see what it's like to be one of the first at the scene of an emergency. This fast medical service is on standby, ready to help you 24 hours a day. If you have an accident, they're the people you want to come to your rescue. On call with me today is paramedic Jan Van. So because there's so much going on, it's going to be so busy. We've got James filming and I've got this camera as well, so hopefully I can get in close. The service takes thousands of 999 calls. Jan alone can get up to 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And we just had another new case come in. We have an 83-year-old lady who's fallen. She has injured her face. That's all we know at the moment. Usually, doctors like me see patients in a hospital where they've already had some treatment. We have the full story of what's happened to them. But you have to think quickly when you know you're going to be the first on the scene of an accident. All the while we're on the way, we're trying to think of all the initial steps we need to go through. And that's what Jan's very, very good at. We arrived just five minutes after the call came in, and I can see our patient Olive with some firemen who stopped to help. My name's Janice. I'm a paramedic. The first thing that Jan's doing is just trying to get a sense of whether or not she knows where she is. Is she conscious? Is she bleeding? What's her pulse? What's her blood pressure? And all of that helps Jan start to make decisions about how best to treat her. And no pains down your back where I was no. pressing? No. What we're going to do is I'm going to sit you up so I can look at your head. Is that OK? Yeah. God, you've been in the wars. How are you feeling now? I feel all right. I've just um, I've slipped up that curve. What's very nice to see is that Olive's talking. She knows who she is. She knows where she is. So all of that's very, very reassuring, which is really nice. How much pain you in with your face? Yeah. It's sore on your cheek. She's got quite a nasty bruise to the side of her face and a little cut on her nose. She's not been unconscious, so we've not concerned too much about her head injury, but we need to get some x-rays on her face and make sure she's not broken anything. You've cracked your face a whopper. I think we need to get you to the hospital for a checkup and get an x-ray on that cheek. The ambulance arrives to take Olive to hospital for further checks. If you get any pain when you're walking, let us know. And what's really reassuring to see is Olive's able to walk into the ambulance by herself, and that's a really good sign. It's really important that the ambulance was here and the paramedics were here. As quickly as we were, she's gotten to an ambulance, she'll be on the way to hospital. Which means it's time for us to get back in the car, ready for when the next call comes in. 5032, new job received, ever. Got an another job immediately? Yeah. With hundreds of rapid response crews like this on standby, it means that if you had an emergency, expert medical care will be with you in minutes. Ouch. If there's a bone to break, he'll break it. If there's a knee to graze, he'll graze it. If there's an ankle to sprain, he'll sprain it. He's the unluckiest kid. If your body takes a knock, it won't be long before you get a whacking great bruise. A bruise is when your little blood vessels break, causing the red blood cells to gush out. Whoa, that looks like the best water slide ever. The red blood cells have nowhere to go, so they fill up in between your normal skin cells. But the area becomes so cramped, the oxygen's cut off, turning the red blood cells blue. You look a bit off colour. Tell me about it. I can hardly breathe. Then your body breaks down the leaked blood cells. Your bruise then turns greeny yellow because the blood cells have been turned into bile and bilirubin, the same stuff that makes your poo brown. Finally, it's slowly absorbed back into the body and your skin goes back to normal. Oh dear. He's the unluckiest kid. <laughs> <laughs>